if you've ever been met with a very sad display of fail on your uh, kiln display, that is an indicator that your thermocouple has failed. Now in the case of mine, uh, this is a, a Scut oval kiln. I have three thermocouples. One has failed, but I am going to go ahead and change all three because I know that if one has failed, the other ones will be shortly uh, to um, go behind it. Um, you can tell when a thermocouple is approaching um, the failure because you can see, let me see if I can get this to focus, you can begin to see a lot of oxidation right there on the uh, tip and it starts to look pretty bad. So those lower ones look a little worse than my uppermost one. This one looks a little bit better, but I still want to go ahead and replace that as well. First thing that I need to do is I need to power it off. I am direct wired, so I'm powering that off. And uh, if you are a, a plug, you can just unplug it. The next step is to remove your uh, screws that hold your panel in place. Now with the screws removed, I can open up the panel. Whenever you want, whenever you open your panel, you always want to check your connections. Look really well to make sure you don't have anything that looks like wires are uh, burning or singeing or anything that's uh, maybe not looking uh, completely good. And um, these ceramic holders right here, these are the holders that will hold the thermocouple. So I'm going to take out the two end screws. Okay, so the two end screws are just holding in the ceramic holder. I'm gonna set those aside so I don't lose them. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, loosen the two screws that are holding the thermocouple itself. And I didn't really need to remove that all the way. It just I loosened it more than I needed to. Now when you look at the end of the thermocouple you can see that you have um, a dark and a light. You want to pay attention to which one was which. So uh, my dark one is on the right. So when I take my new thermocouple, I do need to remove my tape. The tape is really there to help hold your ceramic uh, little uh, spacer insulator thingies. Okay. All right, so as I insert this, I put the dark one on the same side. Oops. Make sure that those are slid down. I'm going to put these back in the corresponding holes. Red one is going to be the one that the red the dark one came out of. Just so I can see it. And I do want to make sure that it's I've got a little bit of space there at the tip. I'm going to just pull these forward a little bit. And then I will put these screws firmly back down.
if you are using a power drill, just use caution so it doesn't snap out of your hands, okay? And then this gets inserted back into the kiln. And I'll reattach my screws. One thermal couple down, two to go. And it's done the exact same way. Okay, all the thermocouples are attached and secured. And as I close it up, just make sure that everything still looks good. Make sure you don't pinch any wires. take just a little pushing, like I had to push it hard on the opposite side to get it to line up with the holes. All right, all told that was less than 10 minutes to change three thermal couples and Power it back on. And there we go. I'm working. So that's how you change uh, thermocouples. As long as you have your thermocouples ready and uh, something, I highly like a, a driver like this, um, it makes it uh, really easy. Um, if you are uh, interested in buying thermocouples, you can get it at any ceramic supplier, um, but I do have a document that I'll link in the video description of Amazon links of uh, various products uh, where you can, you know, find direct links to thermocouples. Um, oh, and these are type K, by the way, I should say. There are different types of thermocouples. You have to make sure you have the right one. So I hope that you found it helpful and you too can change a easy thermocouple.